did learn that a special flight was made tonight by a night vision equipped plane used to fight fires. The mission was a first of its kind. The plane departed from Colorado Regional Airport in Loveland for SS Park right around 6.15 this evening. All right, welcome back to the channel. As you can see here, Colorado Fire Aviation, we had a plane crash on November 16th, 2021. That was Tuesday night, and it was this Air Tractor 802F. We're going to go over this and the pilot and also the fire uh, retardants that they use. So the plane crashed here. Um, close to this Kruger Rock Trail on the southern part of Hermit Park. And uh, next, so you can see Estes Park up there on the top left corner. Looking at it 3D, mountainous terrain. Uh, Juan Brown went over this in his video as well, saying that there was uh, high winds and a lot of weather factors that could have caused this plane crash. I don't see much houses or homes up in that mountainous area. Um, but let's look at the pilot. So this is Mark Thor Olson, 32 years of experience in the U.S. Army and Air Force. He was a hero. This guy has so much experience in the air. And let's see what he has to say. PBS did a documentary on him on exactly what he does. Currently, there's really very little firefighting activity as when the sun goes down. Now, sun goes down, we come home get up the next morning, the sun comes up, we fight the fire. The fire doesn't quit at night. Now we don't have to quit at night because of the night vision goggle technology. I first personally started flying with MEGs in 1982 in the Army in helicopters. Uh, and now it has kind of progressed into the fixed wing world with crop dusting, for example. The technology is there, it's been there. Uh, and it continues to refine. So we've got this highly technical apparatus here. This is just a standard uh, light fixture and we got a seven and a half watt bulb in, in here. So we make a little aperture and what this does is simulate um, moonlight conditions. I'll show you uh, the helmet setup and what we do. So the helmet has a power source. I can either power this side or this side. So that gives me redundancy. Essentially self-contained on the, on the helmet. So the night vision goggle technology, you know, it goes back several years. So we're leveraging the equipment. We're also leveraging the experience that we have. And now we're putting that in to um, the ability to, to fight fires at night. Well, in the evening, in the nighttime, you have less humidity. You actually have probably better aircraft performance because it's cooler generally. And you have less wind. We could take advantage of those situations by flying at night, you know, having continuous coverage on the fire. We're on the fourth year of actually starting to do this. So we initiated in uh, 2017, it was actually with the Oregon Department of Forestry. We would like to look into this. We know the technology's out there. We'd like to look into this. Would you be interested, Go Fire? And Go Fire said, yeah. So you could see he's very smart. He's been doing this a long time. Very sad, very huge loss to the community. This was the Colorado Center of Excellence for Advanced Technology Aerial Firefighting. So they did a lot of research as well. This is not something they just put together. They've been trying this for years. This is what it looks like at night flying with those night vision goggles he was speaking of. Um, here's another picture. They're using helicopters as well. And a lot of training and research went into this. That's why it's very sad that this has happened and makes me wonder what's going to happen to this whole, um, this whole project. Here's some consideration of safety issues. So I put this, this research paper, I'll, put, I'll link it below. But they're saying, you know, pilots must keep scanning, always aware of terrain, uh, must not get target fixate. Um, must dip next to the shore. So a lot of this has to do with um, picking up agent with the helicopters as well. You must have proficiency and experience with night vision goggles. He definitely had that. He was talking about using it in the 80s. So, I mean, all of this safety issues, this guy was definitely at the top, you know. I mean, he was the tip of the spear in, in all of this. So, it's very sad that this happened. Um, but if you want to read that, you can. Also, this is the aircraft, 802 AT-802F. Initial attack, you can see the retardant that it drops. I'll go over what this red stuff is in a little bit. 
effective, economical, Pratt & Whitney PT6A-67AG turbine engine. It can fly slow, slow things down, drop its payload nice and smooth. That's another thing that's crucial. It needs to be nice and even um, throughout. Um, but it looks like a very good uh, aircraft. It holds 800 gallon capacity. This is it here. So 800 gallon capacity is quite a large amount of agent for a small plane. So Cal Fire did some some research and video let's see how it looks so that material is called FOSS check and you can see how wet it is you know it definitely has a lot of water in it this test was with 9,000 pounds of fire retardant so that was right there, 9,000 pounds of fire retarded. And the, the vehicle, I mean, the aircraft used by Mark is uh, 800 pounds. So probably a little bit less, maybe 7,000 pounds of agent. But yeah, that's a, that's a lot coming down. And, and the way that works is it basically, it's not going on the fire, but it's going on the trees and the it's trying to make a line protecting the vegetation that you don't want to burn so the fire will will reach to the area where the retardant is and it won't be able to burn because the phosphate protects it this is perimeter solutions where you can buy this um this solution at so here the phos check here 50 years phos check ban recognized world leader in wildland firefighting um so they're definitely got firefighting foam as well so Perimeter Solutions um, definitely does a lot of sales. I believe it was, so in 2020, average cost per gallon of this stuff was $2.50 per gallon. In 2019, Forest Service spent, um, they spent $23 million on fire retardant and $59 million worth of fire retardant in 2017. So very interesting, but yeah, this stuff is, it has to have water in it so that it doesn't just blow away and it has to be sticky enough. It has to have some thickening agent to it so that it can, it can stick to the trees and the vegetation. Um, it has anti-corrosive properties um, for the aircraft. So, you know, it doesn't corrode the aircraft that it, that's carrying it comes with red dye for visibility so they can see where they've already laid down agent. And then, um, yeah, and it's it's really good for wind. You can see from this picture here, like if it was windy, this thing is heavy enough that, you know, it, it can still be accurate because you wouldn't want it like dry chem. It can blow and get this stuff everywhere. So very interesting. Um, so what next? What next for um, Colorado Fire Aviation? I think, you know, it's just my opinion that they should continue Mark's mission. You know, from the video we saw, um, he would want this to continue. Um, night vision goggles are going to get better and better over time. And, uh, you know, with his passion for this, I don't think that we should let his life go in vain. I think we should continue, but definitely have SOPs um, going forward as to when is it a no-go. If the weather is this certain way, we're not doing it at night. If the terrain is this way or if there's no, you know, risk versus reward, as Juan Brown's video said, you know, is there homes? Is there people involved? Is this fire going to encroach that, that we have to do it at night? And if we don't, if it can wait till morning, if there's nothing that this fire is really going to burn, then maybe, you know, maybe we shouldn't do it at night. Um, but all in all, you know, thank you, Mark, for your service. You will be missed. You are a hero. Um, and uh, hope you guys like this video. See you guys next time.